Praise the Lord. Eternal. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Lord one more time. Amen. 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 All right, if you will, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you're going to do, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you would be in our service, be in our mess, God. Lord, if the devil tries to hinder our service today, Lord, we cast him out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you that your spirit would send conviction to those that need salvation today. In Jesus' name we pray and we praise. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Elijah and Rachel, would you please open the nursery and all the babies and the kids can go back there for whatever lesson that Rachel and Elijah have and Sister Albert. Amen. Silas and Zoe, you can go back to the
church, if we can just gather around and praise Him tonight. Just praise Him within your seed and let Him know that you love Him. And that without Him we could do nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we feel your presence tonight, God. Oh, we need you, Jesus.
Lord, there are sicknesses here tonight, Lord. There are diseases. Lord, there are people with unanswered prayers, Lord, that need direction and guidance. Lord, in your name, Jesus, help us to see you. Help us to see you, mighty God. Help us to see you.
Sister Wonder, would you stand and pray for us? God. Hallelujah. Come on. God wants to do something else here tonight. Hallelujah. Hey! <laughs> 
said every need supplied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every need is supplied. Don't you believe that today? Oh, some ma 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 Holy, holy as we praise you tonight, God. As we lift you up, Jesus. Oh, in the matchless name of Jesus. Oh, don't you just feel him tonight? Do you want to feel it? Just slip up your hand and you'll feel it. He's here. He wants to give you whatever it is you have need of. He wants to give that to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Amen. It's beautiful tonight. Isn't it? it is beautiful. To feel the presence of God. You know how many churches you can attend and never feel the presence of God? Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated tonight. God love your heart. Brother Cameron, let's take up the altar. Amen. <laughs> Some say, oh, he'll forget that. No, don't you ever get so lucky. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is so good. He is so good. Lord, we thank you for this time of giving tonight. We pray, Lord, please bless both gift and giver. We thank you so much for your presence tonight. Lord, your presence means more than anything else. And God, I thank you that we had to struggle at the beginning. But Lord, we broke through Satan's Satan's uh, attack against us. Yay. And Lord, we broke through to the glory. And I thank you, Jesus. It's all worth it. Lord, I just praise you. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You give. It'll be given to you. And as Brother Cameron receives the offering, I'm going to ask Aunt Gail to stay in and testify tonight. It's good to have her here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You better. Have you got all of your board members here Yes. Would you come with the Amen. Stephen, David, come on. said it's time to claim the victory over this yes. tonight and to release unto you a new anointing of togetherness. Yes. Yes, Lord God, we claim you have God. been together up till this point. Yes. Come on. All of you, come on. You've been together up to this point. Yes. Yes, but God's wanting to release something greater yes. into you four. Is this all of the board? Yes, yes. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What he's wanting to do is to bind your heart with your heart, with your heart, with your heart in a way that he has not accomplished as of yet. Yes, you're knit together, but there's coming some things that you're going to have to stand stronger than you've ever stood before in this church. For what's coming against you. I'm not a doomsday sayer. I'm telling you what God is letting me know. Things are coming that unless you are fully knit together. Heart, mind, and spirit. You will be divided. And God says no. Division is not of me. And I bring unity into you. So he's going to bring this togetherness. Rob, would you anoint each one of them? And then, Stephen, would you anoint Rob? Yes, in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord God, in your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your name, God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you what he's coming. I only know that God says. His grace is sufficient, yes. and His strength will carry you through. So, yes. Father, right now, we speak Your word into this board, 
this church, that these hearts, these minds, these spirits will be knit together with such a bond of forgiveness and healing. And no matter what the enemy tries to raise up, no matter what he tries to do, they will see it as the hand of the enemy and they will say, no, no, no. This is not of God that God has already unified us. And we stand united. Now, Father, I release a strength into their spirits and hearts right now that God, this strength will come over them as the enemy tries to stand and do his thing. We bring up their feet tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. They said they had to leave early. Amen. And we understand that, don't we, church? It's good to see Brother Basil Emery, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, the book of Numbers, chapter 25, I don't intend to keep you long. I have felt the presence of the Lord. Amen. But I always think it's needful to bring you the gospel. Amen. And in Numbers, the 25th chapter, I want to go to the first verse. The Bible says, And Israel abode in Shechem, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Peter addresses this in, in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2. And he says that in the 14th verse, he says, Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart, they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed, children, which have forsaken the right way, amen, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man, a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Yeah. When, when Balaam could not get Balaam to do what he wanted to do, he said, get on out of here. Yeah. Amen. How many know that the devil is always hot on your trail yeah. and that if he cannot bring you down one way, he's going to try another way. Yeah. Don't you ever think that the devil is your friend because he is not your friend. Yeah. The Bible says that he is our enemy. He roams to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. The Bible says in, the, in that verse, it says they begin to commit Whoredom with the daughters of Moab. We are not just talking about a physical corruption, but we're talking about a spiritual corruption as well. Can you say amen? amen? There is a spiritual adultery that we commit 
when we tried to dabble in sin. Amen. Thank you, Sister Alvin. She knows how to handle those babies. She handles me all the time. She says I'm the puniest, sickliest person when I'm sick. Amen. It's Rachel Holder back there. I know that. The Bible says that they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods. The Moabites, you got to understand, were a people that worshipped idol gods. And you say, well, we don't have churches with big gold statues set up today here and there. No, no, no. But a lot of people have statues in their home. They have bank accounts that they worship. They have vehicles that they worship. They have family members that they worship. And you can see week after week people miss church because they have a, a, a recliner in their living room they worship. I wish somebody would say amen to that. Amen. I got the board's approval, but can I get anybody else's approval? Amen. Some of us, we, we're so holy and such holy rollers that on Sunday morning we hit the snooze button, roll over, and go back to sleep. I, I believe, <laughs> Sister Wanda, I'm going to get in trouble now, but I believe some people are still going to be there after God comes back. Yeah. Oh, man. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their God, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. What amazes me, Brother Matt, is that they had learnt when, when, when Moses came back down from Mount Sinai and there was a, a golden calf that, that they had to destroy that calf. They had to throw the ashes of that calf into the water and they had to drink that water. Yeah. You would think after a time that people would learn to not put their trust in man and in the world, but in God. Oh, boy, that's pathetic. Amen. I, I saved that up all day and all I got was two amen. I said people have got to learn to put our faith and our trust in God and not the world. Amen. Amen. That's better. The Israelites, they get this invitation in the mail. Amen. The Moabites say, come and join us. We're going to have a good time. Appeals to the flesh. And they go. But remember that the Moabites are from the lineage of Lot. And Israel, of course, is from the lineage of Abraham. So they're distant cousins. Brother Bays is related to them. Yeah. He's related to everybody. <laughs> Amen. He'll walk in sometime and he hears the Crab family playing. Well, those are my cousins. I said, well, of course they are. And they're her cousins. See, you two are related now because that's her cousins too. I believe you, sister. I believe. I ain't calling you a liar. You just you got a new relative up here. <laughs> so they, brother Tony, they they say, come and join us. See the yeah. what Balaam couldn't do with Balaam, he he did with the children. You just give people enough time, and they want to sin. They'll find a way to do it. People want to leave the church. They'll find a reason to leave. Amen. You want to get mad at the pastor? Just hang on a minute. You'll have a reason. I promise. Amen. People are always looking for a reason to leave God out of the picture. I try so hard to find a way to find a place for God in every situation. Amen. Every avenue of our life. David, God should be the director of our lives. We should stop trying to do it ourselves. Yes. Amen. I want to say this about the Moabites. Even though they were somewhat related to the Israelites, you got to be careful who you hang around. Oh, come on now. I don't care if it is family, Sister Laura. we got to be careful who we hang around. Amen. Amen. Well, it was just a party, and it was thrown by so-and-so, and, and there was this substance and this drink and this beverage there. And Let me tell you something. Don't let your good be evil spoken of, because you might wind up ruining your witness. Come on, somebody. You might ruin your witness, amen, before you ever have a chance to do anything else. Be careful who you hang around. Be careful who you befriend. And be careful where you go. If your spirit is unsteady about it, amen, remember to leave. <laughs> amen. Verse number 3 says, And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, 
And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Baal was the idol that was worshipped by the Moabites and some Israelites joining in. Well, it looks like fun, yeah. you know. It looks like a good time. Surely nothing wrong with this. But if God isn't happy with it, why are you participating with it? Amen. Amen. If God's not happy with it and it's taking you away from church or it's taking you away from prayer or Sister Martha, it's taking you away from, from something that has to do with edifying the body of Christ, why are you a part of it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Despite what God had done time and time again for the Israelites, they went on ahead and they hoard themselves to idol gods. Despite how many times God has delivered you, amen, are you still turning your back on Him time and time and time and time again? Amen. The Bible says in verse number 4 that the Lord spoke unto Moses, and hear what He says. He says, take all the heads of the people, you, you don't think that your sin's ever going to find you out? How crazy can you be? How gullible and naive are you to think that you can continue in sin and that God is just going to somehow be happy with you? The Bible says, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said to the judges of Israel, slay ye every one his men, that were joined unto Balpeor. How many know the wages of sin is still death? Amen. Come on, somebody. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. The Bible says in Revelation 20, 15, that whosoever was not, his name not found in the Lamb's book of life, was cast into fire. Amen. I still believe that scripture. Yeah. I still want my name in that book. Yeah. I want to know I'm going to heaven. Yeah. I want to know that my name is recorded in heaven. Come on, somebody. If your name is recorded, why don't you rejoice? Yeah. Amen. Give God a hand of praise tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The world looks at the church as we're so judgmental because we preach messages like this. We don't judge anybody in this church. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 None of us are perfect. There's no perfect people in heaven. Let me tell you something. Before you, before you die, you ain't going to be perfect. Amen. Amen. When it comes your time to go, that doesn't mean you reach the level of perfection, Brother Matt. It just means God's ready for you. There's only one perfect one. Come on, somebody. There's only one perfect one. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So when... Well, how do we get to heaven, brother? How do we, we, we ain't perfect. You've got some blood that was poured out from somebody 2,000 years ago on an old rugged cross that paid for your sin. He's perfect. You don't have to be. Amen. But we don't judge. I don't believe in judging. I don't believe, uh, Aunt Gail, that we judge anybody based on appearance. Amen. The most schooling that you can have or the lack of school. I don't care. As long as you love God, that's the only thing that matters. Amen. If your name is in that book, that's the only thing that matters. Amen. 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 People have got to stop making excuses to stay out of church. Amen. they got to stop committing adultery and then trying to legitimize it. Amen. 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 Well, I go to that certain place and I don't, I don't participate, but let, stop legitimizing it. You know what you're doing is wrong. Amen. Get right with God. Amen. How many know we're a new creature when we come to Christ Jesus? Amen. Amen. I believe very strongly that these people that make every excuse to not live for God and they know the way, God will not allow us to live a life serving two gods. That's right. Amen. You say, well, I don't... So-and-so says they don't worship God, but they also don't worship the devil. They just they just believe, but they don't worship. You're worshiping one or the other. Amen. <laughs> You've devoted your life to one or the other, Sister Kayla, somewhere. Amen. If you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping the devil. Right. Amen. I promise you. And behold, verse number six. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman. In the sight of Moses, this guy was this guy had to be crazy. I mean, he had to 
He just had to have problems here. He, he literally, in front of the congregation of the people, Brother Jordan, he, he brings one of these, these, these Moabite women with him. In the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the tabernacle, we can maybe speculate that they were crying at the door of the tabernacle for the sin that was committed. Lord, please don't let my baby boy die. Lord, please save him. I know he was over there whoring himself and he was doing wrong. But God, please save him. And then all of a sudden in the camp comes one of these men with one of these women yeah. that they've been committing adultery with, flaunting it in the faces of the people. Amen. Let me tell you something. There ain't no different what this man did than what the world is doing in front of the church today. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. They want to flaunt their sin. They want to rub it in our faces. But there's a day of coming, a day of reckoning. Let me tell you, the wages of sin still is death. Amen. The Bible says that they come, amen, to the going to a tent. Verses 14 and 15 tell us who these two people are. If you have your Bibles, jump down there. I ain't going to pronounce these names right at all. Let's just preface this by saying that, brother, no. Now, the name of the Israelite that was slain, talking about the man that brought the woman, even that was slain with the Midianite woman was Zimri or Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of the chief pre, uh, chief house among the Simeonites. I know that one. And the name of the Midianite woman that was slain, and I actually looked this up and then had it read it to me. Her name was Cosby, of course, <laughs> the daughter of Zor, who was head over a people in a chief house in Midian. So both of their parents were chief people in the community. God doesn't care what your background is. God doesn't care how much money you got. God doesn't care what your title and work is. He doesn't care if you're head over the community, if you're mayor of Owensboro or mayor of Poindexter Street. Amen. God don't care. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner. If your name's not in that book, you're going to be tested to the lake of fire. That's not my rules. That's God's rules. Yeah. Amen. But he comes into the camp and he's floating this sin in front of the people. And again, I ain't going to pronounce all these names right. There's smarter people in this room than me, but God didn't call them to pastor. He did me, so let me read it. <laughs> and when Phineas, the, name, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, I got that one, the priest saw it. He rose up from among the congregation. He took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Yes. The plague. What plague? The plague of continual trouble and distress. The plague of sin. The, the greatest problem that, that the, the world has is a three-letter word called sin. Amen. The greatest sin in the world, some of you ain't going to agree with this, but just listen, listen to me and hear me out. The greatest sin is unbelief. Amen. Think about it for a moment. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. And Gail, if the world and the church really believed in hell, they would abstain from sin. Think about it. If you really believed that living in adultery was going to send you to hell, you wouldn't do it. Come on. Oh, I wish the Lord that guy. Amen. 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 If you really believed that alcohol was going to take you to hell, you wouldn't drink anymore. Amen. If you really believed, if you really believed, if you really believed, you wouldn't sin. Amen. Amen. There are people sitting in the house of God that come to church every Sunday. They come to the house of God every time the doors are open, but they don't believe. Amen. They don't believe. They just think they're going to make it to heaven because they shake the hand of the pastor or they, they put the right amount of ties in. No, no, no. God don't care your background. Yeah. I was talking to my sister yesterday, and I'm going to let you all in on a little known secret. Aunt Gail will probably argue with me after church. 
That's all right. I already got rebuked today one time. But when I was a teenager, I really didn't do anything wrong. Brother Matt, I hung out with people that were about five times my age. Did I not see Angel? Angel Cruz, I did. I didn't go to parties. I sure didn't do drugs. And I, I, I didn't party. I didn't drink. I, I was, you know, I liked girls. Obviously, I'm married. But I, I didn't, uh, wasn't obsessed with them like boys were. I literally would hang out with these people that were 60s and 70 year old and and we'd go to Tennessee together and we'd go to Walmart till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. That was my life. I was fine with it. My sister, she told me yesterday on the phone, she said, you gave mom and dad no trouble at all when you were a teenager. I said, I know it. I know it. Amen. But my time was coming. See, when you think so much of yourself, come on somebody. When you think so much of yourself, God will let you know that you think too much of yourself. <laughs> God has a way of teaching us a lesson. He has a way of showing you that he's God and you're just his child. Amen. I thank God he loved me enough to make me grow up. Amen. And those that died in the plague, verse number 9 says, were 20 and 4,000. 24,000 people went from the Israelite camp over to the Moab camp and they committed whoredoms, they worshipped idol gods, they did things that were wrong, they were having the time of their life, but when they came home, dad was standing by the door. Yeah. Hey, so my dad was standing by the door. Punishment begins. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I remember my little sister, she was, now she wasn't perfect, I tell you, she wasn't. She would sneak out of the house at night and Mom and dad would catch her. Man, they'd be standing by the door ready for her to come in. Amen. You'd think they'd let her have it. No, she's got a little trouble and went to bed. But hey, you know when you're doing wrong. You know when you're breaking the rules of God. And there's a judgment day coming, though. The Bible says in verse number 10 that the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. It only took one person. Yeah. It only takes one person doing the right thing to show a whole group of people the right way. Yeah. Brother Jordan, I know we work in some places that are not necessarily conducive to the body of Christ. It's not easy to worship in those places. However, however, it only takes one person. Amen. Come on, somebody. It only takes one person. Saying, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to talk like they do. I'm not going to do the jokes and, and, and do the things that they do. After work on Friday, when they go here, I'm going to go home. I'm going to live a quiet yet pleasing life unto God. Amen. That in and of itself is a testimony. Yeah. You understand that? Hey Amen. You can stop Satan from destroying in your life. You can stop him. You can stop the sin in your life. You can stop Satan from reigning and ruling in your life. Here's what he said in verse number 12. And I'm going to tell you how you stop the onslaught of sin in just a moment. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. And he shall have it and a seed after him. Even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Because he was zealous for his God. And yeah. made an atonement for the children of Israel. God already did that. All you have to do is have place your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 5, turn there with me. I'm almost done tonight. I sure don't want to be labeled as a long-winded preacher. We leave that to others. <laughs> brother Bates. He gets me in trouble all the time. Poor Brother Bates. You guys have got to know this. The man took a nap today. He got in trouble for it. <laughs> Sister Bays, we know. Yeah, we know. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and verse 6, Lord, how do we how do we overcome sin? Some of us, some of us, yes, some of us, we we're committing sins, Brother Tony, and we know how to stop it. Yeah. We know how to stop it. We do. But here is the key to resisting. It says in 1 Peter 5 and 6, 
Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Here you go. We'll start. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Praise God that he does, Sister Ashley. Yeah. Be sober. Be vigilant. Yes. Because your adversary. Yes. That's yes. not Brother Alvy. I ain't your adversary. I'm warning you and trying to give you the gospel tonight. But your adversary is the devil. Uh -huh. Can yeah. you say amen to that? Yeah. And he's as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But here is the key. You resist steadfast in the faith. <laughs> Sister Wanda, we don't move. We stand upon the gospel. We tell the devil. We even throw the word at him. And then we tell him, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God's word says it. When, when Christ was tempted by the devil, what did he use? He used the word. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. You've got to stay steadfast in the faith and refuse to bow to the pressures of the devil. He said, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace God ain't going to cast you into hell. No. God isn't going to cast any one of us into hell. God is not going to cast any sinner into hell. They're going to cast themselves there. The church does not judge. The Bible already has you judged. Amen. We don't stand in judgment of anybody. We don't look at, don't you dare look down your nose at anybody ever walks in this church. Don't you ever do it. My God, I'll have your step outside. Amen. I get mad, Brother Kevin. Man, I get mad sometimes. Glory, I get mad. I ever see somebody going up and trying to judge somebody because they don't look the way the church down the road. Well, you've got a problem, not them. Amen. Amen. People think, I just I just can't stand this. I don't know why I'm on this right now, but uh, Sister Lori, people think they have a right to judge. Nope. Amen. Well, so and so's going to hell because, well, you are too because you're judging. That's right. Amen. They used to say, it's old cliche, you point a finger, you got so many looking at you. That's true, isn't it? You got so many coming back at you. Peter said, resist the devil, steadfast in the faith. Satan, I'm not going to be moved. I know what is right. Tonight, so many of you know what is right. You know how to live. You've heard the gospel. You know what is wrong. You just got to fix the problem with God. The Lord spoke to Moses, though, and, and, and he, he, he vexed those, those, those Midianites. He, he, all those at Moab, they were gone. But not before they caused some problems. <laughs> it is Satan's job. Sister Cindy, it is his desire. You know, think about this for a moment. Satan was one of the most beautiful angels. Well, I mean, how many know that? The Bible says that, doesn't it? He was one of the most beautiful angels. And he was cast out of heaven, falling like a fallen star, amen, out of heaven. We, we see pictures of him, Sister Laura, and he's so ugly and that hideous looking creature. And we, we even portray him with horns, don't we, you know? Like that really makes it even worse. That's not what Satan looks like at all. That's not what Satan looks like. As a matter of fact, if you'd run, if you'd run up to Satan in the flesh, you'd be surprised how good he looks. He was a beautiful angel. The Bible nowhere says that God changed his appearance and made him all ugly with horns. Amen. We like to think of Satan like that. The whole lot of men. Satan knows how to use the right sin in your life to attract you to it. Oh, I wish somebody understood. Amen. 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 He knows how to paint that bottle so pretty that you want it. He knows how to, how to do just the right things and to entice you to go to the wrong places where you fall into a trap. Satan knows how to do that better than anybody. Satan wants to do nothing more than to tear up your marriages. 
Amen. And as Sister Gail said, he wants to tear up this board. He wants to tear up this church. He wants to tear up every church that is preaching truth. Right. Amen. Yeah. He does. Yes. That's what his job is, that he wants to do that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because he thought he was equal with God. Wanted to be equal with God. And if he convinced heavenly hosts to follow him, church, you better resist him steadfast in the faith. Amen. You better know your gospel. As Sister Christie comes to the piano tonight, I know we've had prayer time, we've had altar time, we've had, man, shouting, slaying the spirit. Of it. We've had it all tonight. Let me say this. I don't want you to leave this place and not know God. Come on, somebody. Amen. First of all, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen. I read the obituaries. I look at them every day. Sister Renfro, and I see I see young people younger than us passing away. I'm, you ain't going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you, but I'm 40, 42 years old. I know, I only look 26. Oh, thank you, Sister Marsh. <laughs> hey, her McDonald's. Don't tell Mary. Huh? Oh, don't tell Mary. Her sister, I want that woman in this church so bad I can't I I can taste her. Yeah. But she says I am the cutest thing. Yeah. I mean, we need more like that in this church. <laughs> <laughs> sister Wanda asked me this morning after church, she said, are you conceited? I said, no, I, I've got too many reminding me how I really look to be conceited. <laughs> That's Sister Pat. Yeah, that's Sister Pat. She'll tell you. <laughs> Amen. But I don't want you to. I don't want you to be threatened by going to hell. I want you to stand your ground. And tonight, with every head bowed, every eye closed, amen, please don't. Nobody looking around. Please, nobody. Amen. This is a sincere time. But maybe there is something that's in your life that you know has to go. It has to go. It is going to keep you out of heaven. It has to go. Maybe it's done in the closet of your home. Maybe it's done when everybody else is asleep. Maybe maybe nobody else knows about it because you know what? It really is nobody else's business. That's right. But God knows and that's the only one that matters. Amen. If your name is not recorded in that book tonight, nobody is looking around. I promise you, nobody is. Would you slip up your hand tonight? Would you consider tonight giving your heart to the Lord? Because I promise you, God sees that hand. God sees that hand. Don't think that you can just live a fun life and at the end everything just miraculously happens and you go to heaven because that's not the way it is. This whole life, this whole time in this world is nothing but a time of preparation for eternity. Let us pray. And those that lifted their hand tonight, you don't have to come down front. I understand that. But you've made the first step in admitting. Let us pray tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we owe you so much more than we could ever give you. I thank you tonight for your presence and for your anointing. Lord Jesus, for your sweet spirit that has been in this place. The Lord is still ministering to hearts of those that know that they are not living right. Lord, and tonight I, I pray that you would draw them by your spirit. Lord Jesus, either you draw them to this altar or Lord, even tonight before they lay their head on their pillow, God, they ask you to forgive them. Lord, tonight I know... Come on, let's be humble for a moment. Let's be honest. God, I know that I'm a sinner only saved by grace. Yeah. And Lord, the only thing that's keeping me from hell is a line of red blood. But Lord, I thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you for that blood that was shed at Calvary's cross. Lord, that I don't have to die and go to hell, but Lord, I can spend eternity in heaven. I pray tonight, God, for each one here that maybe don't know you or having something in their life that has to go. I pray, Lord, please, please deal with them. Please give them the strength to say no to the devil. Give them that faith, Lord, to stay steadfast. 
in the name of Jesus. As Sister Christy gets a song, if you want prayer tonight, we'll give you the final invitation to come. Amen.
some churches and they, they they would only dream of feeling the presence of God because they won't push in. Yeah. The key to it is pushing in and giving God praise and glory. And you you owe Him that much. Amen. Amen. You owe Him praise. Amen. Every one of you are standing. Every one of you got breath in your body and none of you are going hungry. Some of you ain't going as hungry as some others. Yeah. Shows. Amen. You owe that to God. You owe him your praise. Don't forget tomorrow night is prayer here at church, 6.30. Every Monday night we have prayer. Next Sunday morning, I'm excited about this, Brother Bays' family, if you can imagine that. Amen. They are coming to the church at 10 o'clock service. That's Brother Wilfred Burden and the Burden family. Amen. And uh, I've just recently learned that some in the church know some of them are in his group. Amen. And so uh, they will be here next Sunday morning. Amen. And they will be ministering in song. We'll probably do a couple handful of songs and then turn it over to him. Y'all hear us all the time. You need to be blessed by somebody else. Amen. So uh, uh, come and just enjoy that. Don't forget after Sunday school or after service next Sunday morning, we're going to have lunch in the fellowship hall. We're going to keep it simple. Sandwiches, chips, desserts. If you don't know what to bring, I'll tell you what I like. You bring that. Amen. But come and just have a good time. This is going to be a picnic out in the fellowship hall where there will be no evening service next Sunday night. And then we're going to have fellowship after church. And then the week after that, so that will be uh, Labor Day weekend. Amen. We are going to have after Sunday school, we're going to have baptism service. Now I have about, uh, I don't, I think we added up six, seven that want to be baptized already. It's so wonderful. I don't know if you've seen it or if you even know what's going on, but there's revival going on in this church. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's what it's called, it's revival. Amen. And so the devil, you, you know, tonight before our church was getting started, we had a tough time. The music wasn't cooperating and this and that. You should expect those things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The devil's going to do everything he can. Amen. To fight us. I thank God that he is. But we're having revival. But we're going to have baptism after uh, Sunday service on the, is that the third then? Is that right? Somebody help me out. Amen. I think that's the third. And we'll have baptism after that. I'm so excited that we have several. Amen. And new people just joined the church today. I think that's great. Amen. God is blessing. If you don't know where to go, you need to show up here. Amen. God is good. All hearts and minds clear before we dismiss tonight. Amen. Anybody got anything? It's your last time. Brother and Sister Renfro, we love you guys. Amen. I love their spirit, don't you? Amen. 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 And they have the prettiest kids, except my parents had pretty kids too. You know? But they have the prettiest kids. You do. God love your heart. God love your heart. Amen. Brother Bays, would you dismiss us? Praise the Lord. Lord, in our holy name, Jesus, we thank you for this service tonight that we've had, the experience of our presence among us, Lord, and the blessing that you poured out onto us. We praise you for all the ministers that have come to the service tonight. We praise you, O oh God, for your power and your magnificence. 
We praise you for making yourself known unto us. And Lord, we pray that you be with us as we take victory in Jesus' name over the devil. Right now, I bind him and I rebuke him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get thee him, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I praise you and thank you, Lord, for the power over the devil. Lord, I pray that you bring every person back again in the next appointed hour in praise and joy and blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. amen.